Hello, Sarah Sabin, Transformational Executive and Team Coach here in the Leading in the Modern Way video interview series. And I am thrilled to have with me today Callum Adamson, who is a serial entrepreneur and founder of Distributed.com. Callum, welcome to the show. And would you introduce yourself in a few words to my listeners? Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Sarah. Um, my name is Callum Adamson. I'm the founder of Distributed.com, amongst another couple of companies. I'm originally from Scotland, but been based out of London for the past 20 years, even though I've been part of two remote first companies. So um, I have a strange accent that you might not be able to place. Um, some call it mid-Atlantic, um, but I guess it's grown out of a need to be understood all over the world. Um, and as the namesake says, um, working with distributed teams, you need to be understood. Mm, you certainly are understandable. Um, and, you know, prior to recording here, I was trying to place Callum's accent rather unsuccessfully. <laughs> so, Callum, I'd love to know more about your entrepreneurial journey. Did you always know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur or was it something that became apparent later? No, I have. Um, so I studied engineering at um, university. I actually left my degree to join a startup. Um, got experience building on the internet firsthand about, well, must be about 20 years ago. Um, within that startup, I understood what the power of building on the web was, what the internet was about to become, how exciting it was. Um, after the team that I moved down to London, um, sold their business, I effectively became a freelancer, became a freelance consultant for project delivery. Um, and I did that for a long time. I, I had a couple of very short stints at companies, but I found kind of the way that large companies move, the speed that they move at, the way that they make decisions to be quite frustrating. Mm. There are smaller, fast moving teams tackling hard problems. So my journey to entrepreneurship was I guess by accident, but intuitive. Hmm. I knew that um, contributing to um, larger organizations didn't get me as excited as working with smaller, fast moving teams. And the best way that you can do that is find a problem, fall in love with it, gather a bunch of weirdos around you that want to solve the problem at the same speed as you um, and with the same passion as you and go and, and get building. Hmm. I love that. And I'm going to pick up on the word intuitive. Because essentially, you had an awareness around what floated your boat, what excited you. And you got that through being involved with the startup, but also going into companies and being like, okay, well, this is not what I want. And um, I hear it again and again from entrepreneurs, the importance of um, the application of intuition, as well as of obviously logic, reasoning, problem solving, etc., yeah, there's you build up. Well, you have a benefit. I have the benefit of being from a STEM background, so there's a lot of first principles thinking involved in in decisions okay. I make. Um, however, when you are building something new that's maybe never been built before, or is trying to reinvent the way that something is done, intuition does play a big role. Uh, your intuition gets stronger. Um, the more, the more uh, you uh, you grow in your journey. Um, and a way of kind of proving that out to yourself is a really great framework is you can make a, you can create a prediction diary. So I'm going to make decision X, Y, and Z, and I believe this will happen in this time frame. You can then check back within that time frame, see if you were right. The more you're right, the more you know to trust your intuition, um, the faster it allows you to move. It's a good way of proving out an intangible. So you mm -hmm. don't need to necessarily um, look for specific data points. If your predictions um, turn out to be true or near enough true you can then make a lot more intuitive decisions along the road mm, yes collecting evidence along the way as a kind of proof of concept of intuition mm. Mm. yeah really you like can that, measure actually. intuition yeah yeah <laughs> no and you know there is a book by daniel kahneman who talks about the science around intuition because it's not just uh, some kind of woo-woo thing you know it's there's science behind it 
yeah, your brain is a library of mistakes and victories and wrong turns and right turns and all that sort of stuff. And what we call intuition is really just um, your brain sort of using all of that compute power to give you an answer. Mm, yeah, uh, I could definitely go down this rabbit hole more. <laughs> I'm going to move back onto your entrepreneurial journey. So I know distributed.com is your third business now. Mm -hmm. And how do you approach leadership in this third business as opposed to in your first business? The the first two were very small. Um, one of them kind of didn't really didn't really go anywhere, didn't like the afterburners. Um, the second one was a three-person business. So leadership was much more collegiate and much more of a collective decision-making process rather than an organizational structure like we have at Distributed, which is a much larger company. Um, approaching leadership in a large business, I've made tons of mistakes in building Distributed. Also made a bunch of great moves um, in building um, building out leadership at Distributed. But how you have to approach leadership as an entrepreneur is there's a, there's a core understanding of specifically in venture-backed companies, right? The team that will get you from zero to one is not the team that will get you from one to two, and so on and so forth. So it's leading the team that you have to achieve the goals that have been set in the next arc of the business to reach the next milestones in the business. Also trying to coach high performers up into roles, positions, or capabilities that allow them to progress onto the next stage at the same time. Mm. Um and at the same time, coaching individuals who will not be right, are not ready, are not going to enjoy the next phase of the business um, to find paths outside of the company to go on and, and um, I guess, be successful on their own track um, and on their on their own path in their career. Um, one of the things that that hurts a lot as an entrepreneur is seeing how do I seeing team members fail mm -hmm. as you grow and it's a failure of leadership when when one of your team members fail when they're when they're when they're not performing when they're not ready to run at a higher pace or work at a higher level of performance or um, any larger role with larger customers with greater risks responsibilities all that sorts of thing um, so coaching individuals on their own career path is as important as growing team members for the next phase of the company, hiring and architecting a framework that allows for high performance, but also psychological safety at the same time. Mm -hmm. There are so many variables at play uh, when you think about leadership in a venture-backed company. It's really hard to get right, <clears throat> but it's balancing empathy with high performance and honesty. It's mm -hmm. If you can get those three things right, um, and also create individual growth paths, whether inside or outside of the company, for each individual within the business. I think you'll you'll find yourself in the, in, a, in a very happy place there um, as a leader. Mm. And you're right, actually, it's simple, but it's not easy to get there. It's it's not simple at all. Um, you're you're dealing with the most complex <laughs> organic structure on earth, which is the human mind. And you're dealing with 140 of them or 250 of them or a thousand of them, right? Um, uh, so it's understanding what, what type of culture you want your business to have at its core, what values you want to live every day and instill in, in your organization. And then ensuring that one, you're attracting people that connect deeply and personally with those values, with that culture, with the mission of your business, and then growing them um, to ensure that they get the most out of their time uh, within the business whether that's for the whole arc of the journey or whether it's for a portion of their career it's doing the right thing by your team day in day out and that's it's a tough job leadership's sure. a hard job done well it it will feel hard too it's important yeah i think i think um i i'm gonna slightly disagree on the point that it's uh not simple it's simple from the perspective of People want different things. And if you can find out what people want to marry it up with the mission of the company, then you've got someone that is kind of naturally self-motivated to work towards the mission of the company. And again, the three things you picked up on, empathy, 
honesty and high performance are also simple concepts. The interesting thing about those three concepts is they can be contradictory. So we can think of empathy as patting someone on the head and being compassionate and being nice. But it's it's not about that. It's balancing that with getting the best out of people with setting expectations, setting boundaries. So I think of all of these concepts by themselves as simple, but the interplay between all of them can be tricky. And, uh, you know, especially if you haven't come from the background where you've been leading people, leading teams, you're learning all of that on the ground and experimenting with that as you're going along and as you're finding out it distributed. I mean, yeah, I agree with you. It's the combination of of all three that makes it hard. Um, they're simple concepts. They always are. But the, there's also, there's leadership, there's coaching and there's management. Those are mm. three different things. Mm. And I think they're bulked into the, the same thing all the time, right? I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. You can be a manager without being a leader and you can be a leader without being a manager. You know, and you can be a coach without being either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I 100% agree. We we are often too quick to lump concepts together. Um but to get all of those three operating together <laughs> that's uh that's the complicated bit. It's it's hard. Um infinitely rewarding when you see new levels of performance, happiness, direction, clarity in individuals unlocked. Mm when you when you participate in them stepping up to a higher level or having a growth moment all the work all the effort that you put in just it, it feels it feels light as a feather because it's so rewarding seeing that in individuals too when you have those moments it's phenomenal mm. that's i guess that's that's why leaders um keep leading and um you know good ones are so highly regarded in the market too because uh, having been on the other side and experienced those moments underneath great leaders it's phenomenal on both sides of the table on both sides of the the value exchange mm. and i think you know i want to emphasize this point that leadership can be learned so some people are for sure more naturally inclined more instinctually inclined towards good leadership mm -hmm. but we can all emulate those qualities and integrate them you know wherever we are and whatever our personality is and on that point, I'm curious to know about you and how you've invested in yourself as a leader and what mm. steps you take to grow and evolve in your role. I've invested deeply in becoming um, my CEO coach calls it the, the CEO the business deserves. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've had a CEO coach for the past five years. Um, I've had performance counseling once a week for the past three and a half years um i've got a strong and tight peer group of individuals that are all smarter than me um it's important to be the dumb person in the room as much as humanly possible um and it's it's only through consistent application of those efforts that i can even i wouldn't call myself a great leader but i'd call myself a highly improved leader over the past half of a decade um it's in the performance of the com company is directly related to um, how capable its leaders are, how mm -hmm. good they are at coaching, how good they are at managing. If you can assemble a team of highly talented individuals um, and open doors that allow them to be better together, better perform better as a unit, but also improve as individuals, the company is going to going to take off, is going to do incredibly well um, and will become its own talent attraction engine. So, um, in those three ways, I've invested heavily over the past half decade in becoming a better leader, better coach, better manager. Mm. And how do you, because you mentioned it impacts the business. So as you see yourself improving, as you have a stronger leadership team around you, what tangible impact do you see that having on the business? The tangible evidence that you see is mood and pace mm -hmm. um, hard things become easy um, deliveries um, become effortless and faster than planned 
um, but general mood, enthusiasm, enjoyment, um, support uh, of each other it goes through the roof. It becomes an electric environment rather than a work environment. It becomes a place, um, I don't want to use the word, but like full of full of dopamine and energy um, rather than a place where people show up to get paid. Mm. It becomes a hobby. So what are your views on um, a remote culture and let's say a few things to consider to make it successful? Sure. Um, COVID was the worst thing that could ever possibly um, happen to remote work. Um, it did quite the opposite of teach us that everybody could work remotely. Um, we, during COVID, we called working from home remote work. It's, it's the equivalent of being in a life raft and calling it sailing. Not the same thing. Re <laughs> remote work is not work from home. It's certainly not working from a stool in your kitchen. It's a conscious choice. So distributed is a remote first company. Mm -hmm. You can see from my video setup here, my microphone, my camera, my lights and all that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. It, we take it very seriously. If this is how I interact with the world. It has to be first class. It has to be as close to being in person as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, I also have the use of um, flexible office locations. So two to three days a week, I'll work from other parts of the country. Um, but it will be the same setup and the same consistency. Um, our company um, isn't tied to meetings. Um, so we, traditional businesses like uh, a lot of the, the world that, that went and worked from home during COVID, their rhythm, their daily rhythms are around meetings and in-person interactions and where desks are cluster, clustered or what hallways connect to, to other hallways. When you build a business remote first from the beginning, it operates in its DNA is remote first. So asynchronous communications, um, clear, consistent document storage, security, video communication, uh, audio quality, lighting quality. Um, we work in schedules that actually allow us to work with nine different time zones, which isn't 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 um, isn't possible in a traditional office based environment. Now, all of these companies went and worked from home, but all of these companies managers had been taught how to be good managers in an office environment, not a remote first environment. Mm -hmm. And it's the difference between growing plants in the greenhouse outside to growing them in space. It's could the science could not be more different. Um, so tips for a remote first environment, asynchronous communication by default, mm -hmm. basically stop talking to people like we're doing right now, write things to people. Um, you have to consciously engage in professional and social communication. So there needs to be space. And it's weird because it sounds like forced fun, but it's not. But this is play. Uh, if you think about in the office, um, maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hazard a guess. 20% of the day is social engagement. Do you want to get lunch with me? Grab, let's grab a coffee together. You know, small chats. So you have to set aside those moments to create the rhythm of social engagement in a remote first environment. Um, and lastly, you really need to promote autonomy within your organization because there is no kind of over the shoulder management <laughs> going on. There's no, there's no presenteeism. There's none of that. Um, oh, but I'm last out of the office every day. It doesn't matter in a remote first environment. So autonomy, create space for social engagement and asynchronous communication is essential. None of which um, comes from traditional core office based um, managers or leadership um, frameworks. So when you hear all these businesses like JP Morgan or Netflix or like we have to go back into the offices because we have not re-architected the organization to work in a remote first way. That's what they're saying mm -hmm. is we're not going to do that because it's painful. And it is. Imagine getting a company like IBM to adopt all remote first methodologies. It's not going to happen. So, yeah, those businesses have to go back into the office. And they will be superseded by remote first companies um, that will outperform them. And it's going to be a fantastic 15 year journey to transform that. Mm, thank you so much for sharing that. That was a really interesting take on it. Mm. And I haven't necessarily heard it put in that way. But thank you. Those are three great tips there. Um, final question, Callum. Sure. If you could go back in time and give one piece of advice to your 20 year old self, what would that be? start 
<laughs> I love the conciseness. Just start. Do it. Okay. Do you it. are not going to avoid mistakes. You're not. You can't. You can't plan your way out of them. You can't strategize your way out of them. You cannot Excel spread your spreadsheet your way out of them. Right. You can't mentor your way out of them. Start. Make your mistakes. Fail forward. Do them often. Do them fast. Be humble a thousand times. I learned that. And, you know, you, you're going to fail more than you're going to win. But if you are consistent in your efforts and your um, introspection of your failures, you will succeed and you will build something that's valuable, that people enjoy, that creates impact and that you're very proud of. Thank you so much, Callan. Wise words indeed. I really enjoyed this conversation today and I hope you, my listeners, enjoyed this conversation as well. If you would like to be a part of the Leading in the Modern Way video interview series, please do reach out to me. Thank you. Bye for now.